My name is Sean Lee, and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Notre Dame and a member of the Center for Rare and Neglected Diseases. The overall goal of our research is to understand how bacterial pathogens cause disease and how perhaps we can use this knowledge to uncover new ways to fight many of these diseases. One of our main interests is on compounds called bactericins, which are biological peptides produced and chemically modified by bacteria to kill off other bacteria. There's a real need today for developing new types of antibiotics, especially with the emergence of things like MRSA and multidrug resistant tuberculosis. I started college as a double major in architecture and molecular biology, but I can definitely recall one experience that tipped the scales in favor of scientific research. I was taking a neurobiology lab at the time. We were learning how to do electrophysiology measurements, and it was actually a pretty tough experiment. You had to guide a micropipette onto the surface of a frog sciatic nerve and gently poke the end into the actual neuron without poking too far and having it come out the other side. I was probably doing this for about an hour or two when I finally saw that trace and was able to record electrical impulses and that was really so exciting. I think I screamed out loud even though I was totally alone in that classroom. One of the things I remember is that you had to have pretty good motor skills to be able to nudge the pipette tip into the neuron. And I think I developed a lot of these incidentally through endless hours of building models for my architecture projects. The person who really opened the door, literally and figuratively, to research science for me was Dr. Ian Lipkin. Dr. Lipkin is very much a modern day pathogen hunter. And his group led the team that first discovered the presence of West Nile virus in the United States. I think I literally walked into his office, introduced myself, and asked for a job. He was working on neurotropic viruses at the time. The hypothesis was that there could be an infectious component to neurological diseases such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and schizophrenia, which I found really fascinating. This experience really piqued my interest in infectious disease research, so I decided to join Dr. Maggie So's lab at Oregon Health Science University as a graduate student. Dr. So was a terrific mentor. She made me appreciate that unexpected results could lead to exciting scientific findings. She was really good about looking at my experimental data, especially the ones which look like complete failures to me, and always suggests that unexpected results could be something potentially more exciting given careful thought. So many paradigm shifts in scientific discovery have come about through unexpected data that may have looked very disheartening upon immediate inspection. I joined the Biological Sciences Department at the University of Notre Dame in the fall of 2009. Notre Dame is truly a special place. One of the things that makes this place really special are the students. I'm very proud of the several undergraduates that have joined my lab. They have contributed important data for which they will be included as co-authors on scientific manuscripts. One experience I could share as a new faculty member is the process of making sure you have all the tools necessary to do experiments. When my lab manager Clayton Thomas and I were first starting in the lab, we realized at some point in the experiment we needed a rotator to incubate these samples. We didn't have one, so we had to run down to the market and buy this Lego contraption, and he promptly designed this amazing device for us to rotate our microcentrifuge tubes. I think this is a really good maxim in science and that sometimes you need to construct the tools to be able to do the work. This rotator is kind of an amusing sample, but in many cases in scientific research one needs to generate lots of biological materials and build tools in order to test your hypotheses and answer the questions. Our lab's primary goal is to study virulence factors produced by pathogenic bacteria and somehow use this knowledge that we gain from the studies to come up with better strategies to fight them, such as new vaccines and new antibiotics. In particular, one very potent toxin that we study is called Streptolysin S, which is produced by group A Streptococcus. This is the pathogen that causes strep throat, but also is responsible for very severe diseases, such as necrotizing fasciitis, which is commonly referred to in the media as the flesh-eating bacteria disease. Streptolysin S is known as a homolysin for its ability to rapidly destroy red blood cells, but it's also quite good at tearing up just about anything resembling a human cell. What we've discovered is that many other microorganisms, from cyanobacteria to archaea, seem to be making things that resemble the structure of Streptolysin S in some way, 
but that in these cases, the product that is made is harmless to humans, but very harmful to other bacteria. These are then, in essence, nature's antibiotics, and the more knowledge we gain about how the bacteria engineer these compounds, the greater the hope that we can use their knowledge to guide the design and development of the next generation of antibiotics and novel anti-infectives. Bacteria have had millions of years to figure this out, so we might as well learn from them. I'm proud to be a part of the mission of the Center for Rare and Neglected Diseases. An aspect of our basic research is to understand how unique microorganisms produce antibiotics and perhaps use this knowledge to discover novel antibiotics, especially in light of the emerging threat of resistance. Even with this threat, research into new antibiotics face similar hurdles to those of the rare and neglected diseases, in particular with respect to the decrease in the development of new antibiotics by pharmaceutical companies. My hope is that an aspect of our research, especially with regard to the discovery of novel anti-infective compounds, will contribute to the overall mission of the CRND and its commitment to converting basic research findings into potential therapies.